What's up guys, Matt with Bleepin' Jeep, everything off-road, none of the boring stuff. I figured I'd bring that back since you guys liked that one. Today we're going to install Evans Coolant in the Comanche. I put it in the Scorpion, if you remember, and it did great. I wanted to make sure that it was good stuff before I did an install video on the Comanche. But before we do the how-to, I want to talk about what is Evans Coolant. So this replaces the coolant in your engine. Typically you'd have a 50-50 antifreeze water mix and this is going to replace that entirely. I really wanted to try this for a long time now and what held me back was the the process. So the process is a little um, tricky. You have to get all of the water out and replace it with the Evans. So that's the hard part. But the great thing about Evans is that it's got no water in it. So what does that mean? That means no rust, no corrosion, and no steam. So the boiling point of water is 212 degrees. The boiling point of 50-50 antifreeze and water is 235 degrees. And the boiling point of Evans is way above that at 375 degrees. So it can boil, but you're never gonna get that hot. Your, your engine's just not gonna get that hot. When water boils, it creates a vapor, and that's what overheats your engine. So if you ever get your antifreeze 50-50 mixture too hot, it's going to create vapor. And the vapor creates a like an air pocket inside your engine, and that's what causes issues and creates overheating. The Evans, though, it doesn't boil until 375, so it's always got a liquid up against the internal engine block, and that's what the real benefit is. Also, because there's no water in it, it doesn't have electrolysis and there's no corrosion involved because what does it take to make rust? It takes water. Another benefit to Evans is that it doesn't build extreme pressures. They say three to six PSI max and your radiator cap typically is about 16 pounds and that's because whenever you boil over, it builds pressure and it has to release. What the Evans does is it doesn't build that pressure, so it's not going to expand on all of your components, all of your seals, all of your radiator hoses, uh, so it's just better on the system overall. So for that reason, a lot of collectors use Evans because it doesn't corrode. A lot of times you have a car sitting around for a long period of time, you don't want it to get rust inside. So they typically recommend this not for daily use vehicles, although you could, but uh, generally it's used for stuff like this. Rock crawlers, uh, collections, cars that sit around for a long time, motorcycles and in the racing industry as well. And another benefit, since it doesn't corrode, it's reusable. If you can put it in a bucket and save it, you can just put it right back in and reuse it. Let's get started on installing the Evans in the Comanche. All right, I'm gonna say there's five steps to doing this conversion. So the first step is to drain all the water and antifreeze. Second step is to put in this Evans prep fluid. That's going to dilute everything even more. Then we're going to drain that and then we're going to put in the real Evans. That's the fourth step. And then the fifth step is we're going to check it and make sure that we've got all the water out. So first we're going to grab a bunch of buckets to collect the antifreeze. We have to get all of the water and antifreeze out. So that means draining the radiator, draining the engine block, and draining the heater core if you've got one. So you want to make sure to get all of that water and open all the vents, open all the hoses, and try to get it out. We're going to use low pressure air too, so I'll show you that in a sec. And we've got Josh to help us out. So Josh's Instagram is bleepin' Josh. Follow me at bleepin' Jeep on the social medias. We've got cool stuff. Oh yeah. That's the wrong color. <laughs> it's green. It's green. <laughs> What's up? I sent my hearing aids in three weeks ago for repair. I haven't heard anything since. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't know this, there are drain plugs on the side of your engine block. So the best way to get all the fluid out is to open those drain plugs. And in our case, we also have this custom radiator which doesn't have a drain plug on it. So I'm gonna have to lift this up and kind of tilt it over on its side to get all the fluid out of that one. It's 
pretty simple. All we're doing is opening up every orifice that we can find that has coolant and draining it out. The easiest way to do that is with air. If you're gonna use compressed air though, make sure you don't have it above 16 PSI. You don't wanna blow anything. And that's what your, everything should be rated for about 16 pounds. And this comes in handy too. So if you have a leaf blower, you can get that down in there. It's got a lot of volume, but very little pressure and you can try to blow all of the water and coolant out. So places you have coolant, your radiator, your engine block, your heater core, which is in your firewall usually in that area. And of course, don't forget your overflow bottle. Your engine has a drain plug somewhere in it. If you can find it, there's gonna be a lot more fluid in there that you didn't know about. This one is way up above the oil filter, way up in there. All right, so I've got most of the fluid out. We've even got it tilted with the jack to try to move all that fluid to one side. The next step, we're gonna put the prep fluid in, but before we do that, we have to put all the hoses back together. All right, so now we're just gonna fill this back up with the prep fluid, one of my favorite all-time purchases is this no-spill funnel. They basically have adapters that go on your radiator cap and you can then not spill it. And whenever you are filling it up, you fill it up to here, run the engine and it'll just suck it down when it's time so you don't have to mess with all that. I'll leave a link down below in the description box, but you can get those on Amazon or wherever. AutoZone I think has them too. All right, that's pretty much stopped flowing down. Now I'm gonna have Josh start it up. We're gonna try to get all of the air bubbles out of here. Once we bring it up to operating temperature, you wanna make sure that the thermostat opens and that it's circulated throughout every component. After that, then we're gonna drain it again and put the real deal in here. it cool down. Now the next step is to repeat the whole process. We've got to pull everything back apart and drain all of that and try to get all of that prep fluid out again so that when we put the Evans in, it's 100% Evans waterless cooling. Make sense? It makes sense to me. Try not to burn ourselves. It's still a little warm. It's toasty. Don't spill it all. Round two, we've got all the prep fluid out. It's time to refill. And I wanted to go over a few misconceptions that people have with this stuff. So number one, is it gonna make your engine run cooler? Well, no, it's not. In fact, they say it could be a little bit hotter but it's not going to boil and it's not going to cavitate, which means it's not going to boil out, for one. It's not going to create air pockets in your engine. So even if you're running at a little bit hotter temperature, the reason that you have issues with regular coolant is because it gets so hot that it evaporates, boils away, and then you don't have coolant, and then you're left with air pockets everywhere. And number two, it's not going to solve your issues. If you have a water pump that's not working, you're not going to be able to put this in there and it just make everything work just fine. You need to have a functional cooling system, so make sure that everything is operational before you install the Evans. The freezing point, if you're in the cold climates, is negative 40 degrees. All right, once we get this in, we're gonna circulate this, and I'll show you how to check to see if we got all the water out. Now at this point, all we have to do is continue to burp the system. What that means is just get all the air bubbles out. The easiest way I've found out to do that is with one of these funnels, and then you want to put your nose uphill, 
and you're just going to let it get hot. Let it get to operating temperature. That thermostat's going to open. It's going to push all the fluid through. And once that happens, then you can go ahead and uh, shut it down or drive it around a little bit. Then when you let it cool down, it's going to suck some more of that fluid down. You probably need to do that two or three times before you get all the air out of the system. So anytime you change all your fluid like this, make sure to check it for two or three days afterwards and make sure that you don't need to top it off. Last step. I like this one. It's my favorite because science. So this is a refractometer, otherwise known as a refractometer. What it does is it checks how much water is in here. So you're going to take a little bit of that, put it on the plate there, and links below. These are cheap. They're like 18 bucks on Amazon, so they're not expensive. You're going to look towards the light into the sun. So this is what it should look like if it's all good. You have no water in it. And if you do have water, if you did something wrong, you're going to have blue. In this case, this is 100% water. You don't want it to have a blue line. And if you do, it should be below the 3% mark. Since I've added the Evans to the Scorpion, I've had a few questions that I should get ahead of right now. But if you have questions, leave them down below. The first one is that people say, uh, yeah, but you can't just fill it up with creek water if you have issues. Actually, you can. You can. You can fill it up. If you have Evans in your system and you run into an issue where you need to add more, let's say you have a leak, you can go ahead and fill that up with water. The only problem is once you get back home, you're going to have to flush that system out and start over. Um, but my point here is that it's no different than oil or transmission fluid, power steering, steering fluid, brake fluid. I carry those with me and I do the same thing with the Evans coolant. That way I don't have to fill it up with water. If I have a leak out on the trail somewhere, I just say, oh, shoot. Put some more Evans fluid in there because I carry it with me. So if you get in a bind, you can add water. You just then will have to go back home and start over from scratch. At that point, the water is just going to dilute the Evans and act like regular coolant at that point. You won't have the corrosion protection and it won't be at that high boiling point anymore. But you can do it if you run into that issue. If you have more questions, comment down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. All right guys, that's Evans. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, leave those down below. Again, all of the products we used are in the links down below. If you like our t-shirts, check those out at bleepinjeep.com. We've got the Jeep fan, we've got the bleepin' Jeep shirt, and we have the periodic table of Jeeps, all the Jeeps ever made on one t-shirt. If you like this video, check out those because they're just as awesome. We'll see you in the next one.